Hello, 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 hello. Hi everyone, I'm not sure if I'm on or not. This is the first time I'm doing um, this live on my own. Hold on. Hi everyone, how are you doing? This is In or Out Ministries. Um, I'm doing a new thing today. I am inside um, because it's really hot outside. And um, of course, we have to be we have to be wise, you know. So I am not sure if you're seeing me or not. If you are, please let me know. I I don't have my assistant today to assist. Normally, I can't see what's going on on the screen. This is the first time I'm doing this. I'm actually seeing myself, and I don't all these new fancy icons. I don't even know how to work this thing. But um, let me just press the screen here to see if it does something. Oh, it wants me to do some sort of I don't know what this is anyway we're going to go ahead okay so um, if you're seeing me good somebody please let me know um, if everything is coming over okay hold on let me see bring them on Francis is watching Don is watching okay awesome so I'm seeing some stuff going on okay that's great so if you can see me and hear me just let me know yes i can see you and um you can see me and you can hear me please help me out here please y'all are going to be my assistants today okay so this is in or out ministries coming on live every two weeks and of course so working now morning nurse john how are you doing so i can see everybody now that i don't know what i did but it, it's it's kind of like working so that's pretty cool okay well thank you all for coming on and um so i'll jump straight into it i have a word for you today i have a word it's for somebody it mightn't be for everybody but it is for somebody today okay um Yes, we've lost a very dear friend, a friend of my sister's actually, but you know, she also became a friend of mine, a different type of friend than my sister, that she was to my sister, but I, I developed a very, I would say, spiritual relationship with her, and it really, it, oh my God, it, it hurt me. Um, and I just wanted if they do watch this um, live video I don't know if they will or not or if you know her you could forward it to her but I just wanted to tell her and you know you can see that um, you can see that her you can see that she is hurting There's such a, 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 a hole in her heart you know and the thing is with death there's nothing that we can do we just have to go through it we just have to go through you know, time heals all wounds. The Bible does give us a certain amount of time that we should be um, grieving for. You know, we cannot grieve forever. We have to we grieve for a time and we have to let it go. We have to let them move on. Because they've gone into the spiritual realm and we have to 
to concentrate on ourselves that have been left behind. I've, not, I've never lost a child, I haven't lost my mother, but I've lost my father, I've lost my two grand, sets of grandparents, I've lost my sister, and I've lost my brother. So I know about death. I know about death. You know, I don't like death. To this day, I, I don't I have no pictures of my father. I've hidden all his pictures, because it breaks my heart to look at him. He died only, I think, at 62 or 65. Still young. When I look at people that are, I'm almost, well, in 10 years I'll be 65, but I know friends that are 62 and 65. I said, my God, that's how young my daddy died. So, I just wanted to share a scripture with those that have lost. And then last night I was looking online and saw this young man that died in St. Thomas. He was from St. Kitts and it's a shock to everybody. And, but it's like we are losing people every week and not just the elderly. We are losing young people, children, people that are close to us. So it's a the tough times that we're living in. Tough times. And, and I wonder, you know, will they make it in? Will they make it in? So the message for us here that I left we have to get where they are. No, not necessarily if they did not make it in. No, we don't, we don't go to hell. Hell is a real place and heaven is a real place. They are both in the spiritual realm. And once we die with our, our spirit, separates immediately from our flesh. Our flesh goes back into the dust and we immediately go into that spiritual realm and we either go to hell or go to heaven. So death, so um, it says here, and, some, and with some scriptures I will paraphrase, it says, I am the resurrection of, of the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Serious scripture. Okay, and also for those who are mourning, I'll be doing some kind of little weird things here. I'm actually handling this on my own today, so just bear with me. Um, Isaiah 61 says, just to comfort you, Isaiah 61, of course you want to pull out your Bible. I'm getting to my introduction, but this is what the Holy Spirit is leading me to do right now, and that's what I'm doing. But we have to submit to His way. So Isaiah 61 says, The Holy Spirit and those who are called and who are anointed, that we are called to comfort all that mourn and to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion or, or mourn among the church, among, among, among the people, to give unto them beauty for ashes. So I speak to you now, those who are mourning. I pray that you will have you will be, be comforted and you will have beauty for ashes the oil of joy joy for your morning not for the morning tomorrow morning for morning m-o-u-r-n-i-g and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness hallelujah the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness not going and get drunk, not going to feel good in the fleshly way, but put on a spirit of praise and worship. It's like putting on a garment to cover the heaviness of your heart. Praise God. Now, let me know if um, this thing is working here. Just a moment here. I'm going to put this up here. Hold on. Okay, I don't know what's going on with this phone. Just let me know if it is working or not. Um, I do not want to do this. Just a moment here. I'm trying to figure out. There's this little thing that keeps coming up, and I don't know what it is. And um, I just hope that you're seeing me. That's it. I'm hearing you. Okay, thank you. So let me move on. And then for those that have...
have had babies, congratulations. I guess a special grandma has had a new grandbaby. Congratulations. And I just pray that you will continue to watch over your child. Pray and stand in the gap for your child. I pray that the parents get to, they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That they will get to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So that they can, um, as Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. they will take care of the child spiritually hallelujah one moment here i'm going to try some i don't know what is going on with this um hallelujah well i'm seeing some stuff here i don't understand this but if you can see me just please let me know hold on let me see if i delete i'm going to press this button here to see if this works. Hold on. Just bear with me one moment, please. I'm going to see how this looks on um on my other on my tablet here. Okay. Just bear with me here. One moment. So, um, just bear with me here, Facebook. Just bear with me here, okay? I just want to tell you right now that this is not, some of us feel that this is rehearsed. This is not rehearsed. This is not a show. This is not the, um, this is not the new reality show. It's not. No, why is my Facebook? Let me tell you. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. This does not want to come on. Hold on. So I hope you all are seeing me here. Please let me know if you are seeing me or if you're not seeing me. Okay, because there is some, this little thing going on here. And I don't know what this is. It's an icon that I am not used to. And it's doing all sorts of weird things. And I feel that I'm not being seen or not being heard. So um, please just... Um, let me know if you're seeing me. Please write, say something. Yes, I'm seeing you. Or yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, so I can I can move on. Okay, yes. So, okay, okay. Great, great. I see uh, my dear friend. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. So you see me. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so again, this is um, In All Out Ministries. The website is www.inouroutministries.com. Um, of course, you can get uh, my email is in or out ministries at gmail.com. Um, of course, I have the Facebook page and I also have Instagram. I also have YouTube, which is very, very important. Now, all the videos that I upload on YouTube also goes to the ministry page. Okay, so I have that channel for those that are not into social media. A lot of some people are not into social media, especially the older people. And the message, um, the message needs to be shared. Some messages are for them. Maybe they, they've heard about it. And they, of course, they want to, to hear, you know, what the word is for them. Okay, so you want to, on the YouTube video, you want to subscribe. You want to, um, and also click that little bell. So whenever I put on a, a new teaching, it will, you will be alerted. Um, also, for the older people, you want to show them how to get to YouTube. Um, some people are challenged with how to get to all these different things. Um, so just just show your your elders or your older friend how to how to you know to manage it. Okay, and um, now with the Facebook page, you want to like and you want to follow. Not just like, but want to follow. If it does it both at the great time, great. You want to like and follow, and you also want to share. Share why. Not because I want to come famous. I am I'm already famous. Okay? I am already famous. God already gave me my earthly famous. Miss Dominica, 1985. Here I am. Only Miss Dominica to ever go to the Miss Universe pageant. Here I am. So I have my earthly crown already. I don't need to show off or to, 
to get any fame or fortune. Okay, I don't need your money either because God supplies all my needs in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, and if my, if my faith is wavering when it comes to money and provision, trust me, I get down on my knees. I get down on my knees. It's for me to get down on my knees and pray and increase my faith and to fill up. Hallelujah. Because he did everything for me already at the cross. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, so my new phone number is 407-304-9642. Again, 407-304-9642. Okay, hold on a minute here. Okay, I'm seeing all sorts of stuff coming on. I think I'm going to go off and come back on because I'm not seeing what I need to see. So I'll be right back. Oh, one moment, please. Thank you. There's a few walls. Okay. Okay, just one moment, please. Please. Okay, so there I am. So, okay, bring them up. Okay, I don't know what, I, I really don't understand what's going on. So if y'all can see me again, please somebody let me know if you can see me. Okay. Okay, great. So going back to the teaching. So I have a new telephone number 407-304-9642. Okay. Also, if you need an officiant for a wedding or a, or a funeral or baby blessing or whatever you need to, Wherever in the world, please, you can um, reach out to me. and Or you could go online. You can actually book a, a, an appointment online or, you know, on the website. Okay. Also, those who have been coming on to the Word of Knowledge um, Bible study class, thank you so much for coming on. It's been awesome. The class is every single Thursday evening at 8.30 p.m. It will not change. Every single Thursday evening at 8.30 p.m. through the Zoom app, you just download that app um, and then you could come through. I have people from Dominica um, coming through the app and, and participating or you can do the conference calling. Oh, by the way, I understand there's bad weather in Dominica, so I pray that um, the winds will be still and the rain um, would not be as heavy to affect, to affect anyone. Okay. Okay. So thank you for that. So now what we're going to be doing, I'm, I'm, I started a series on basically like the end times and um, next Thursday or Thursday coming, we are going to be discussing the, tri um, the, the rapture. There's controversy reg um, um, regarding the rapture as to when it's going to occur or if it's going to occur, but what we're going to go Bible based. So we're going to dig into the Bible and we're going to see what the Lord says about the rapture and not what doctrine says, okay? What I've done is I've made the class very interactive. I will teach for 30 minutes and then the early, other 30 minutes, um, um, everyone will have some input. So what you want to do is you could um, start studying um, um, regarding the rapture. Okay. So that's going to be pretty interesting. So as I said before, this is not a show. This is not the latest reality show. Um, I don't have any fancy apps or any fancy equipment. This is just my little handy dandy iPhone here that I'm using. Okay. And um, when I speak, when I come on here, on every two weeks, 
I hear from God. This is, this is what God has downloaded inside of me. God gives me, God already knows you. God already knows the audience that's going to be looking. You know, we tend to put God in a box. Stop putting God in a box. He's all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God. He is omnipresent, he is omnipotent, and he's omniscient. You understand what I'm saying? So he already knows. So what God, this ministry is not from me. It's from God. He, he birthed that ministry in me. So what he does is that he gives me, he gives me scriptures to bring to you. And he gives me, um, he tells me what I should discuss with you. And then I bring it all to you. No, that comes from the Holy Spirit. Then I get and I, I put together a message. But then when I'm speaking to you, the Holy Spirit will download something else and might just flip the script and just change, change it again. So this is not rehearsed. This is not rehearsed and it cannot be rehearsed. If you're looking for a rehearsed um, program, there are many, 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 many programs on the internet out there. This is not rehearsed. This is straight as you see, as you get, um, downloaded by the Holy Spirit. Okay, and um, let me see what else. Okay. You see, the, what the word said is that it's not by, it's not by my power, but, by, but not by my might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It has to be by my spirit, says the Lord. Okay, now, do I know all scriptures? No, I don't know all scriptures by heart. The more I study the word, God is putting them inside of me and they just come out. The, God, the Holy Spirit might just bring to my memory a scripture and it might just come out. Do I quote it word for word? Maybe I might not. I might paraphrase. If I don't know, he shows me where to go to it and I pick up my Bible and I go to it. You see what I'm saying? So that's how it works. We have to be, stop being intimidating to, to share um, the knowledge and wisdom that we have learned from, from the Almighty. You know, a lot of us are in churches that um, are oppressing us, you know, and are not teaching us to be trained up, you know what I mean, in the callings that, that, that we are called to do. You know what I mean? Okay. So basically, I am just an instrument. Now, there are different people. People have different personalities. You might be a very quiet, smooth talker. I am not. I am hot. That is me. I am very emotional. I'm dramatic. That is me. So that's how my word is going to come out. Now, might it, you mightn't be able to receive from me because you're not a dramatic person like me, but there is somebody else that's going to receive from me. I am not talking to one person. I'm talking to people across the board. Some are new Christians. Some are sinners. Some are not Christian, some are atheists, some belong to one of the other religions, or some are very much in the world, a mature Christian, so they're going to receive what I am saying um, according to the level that they are. Okay, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I am coming out live and direct. I don't know if you've seen my introduction or my other videos or what, but I am live and direct. I have always been a live and direct person. What you see is what you get. In the world, I was live and direct. I never, I never hid. There's some people like like to do things in secret, secret, secret. But the more worse, the, the more worse than you. Not me, not me at all. I was always upfront, um, and that's that, and that's and, and that's why God chose me to be upfront with His word. That's it. According to my bishop, um, Tony Owens, if you want to go, we are, we, are, we should be all grown-up Christians. We have to be mature Christians today. Okay? Um, we live it in the end and the last and the last of the last days. And I can break it down to you, but that's not the message I got today. You could go actually to my message on YouTube that says either you in or either you out. You understand? You listen to that message. But we should we all be grown-up Christians. We're going to church for how many years? We're going to church since we were in our mother belly. We sit down on the same bench. And up to now, you haven't grown up. It's time for you to grow up. If you want to go, according to my bishop, um, if you want to do finger painting in church, or if you still want to be in kindergarten, you can go to the church um, down the road. They, they, they're doing finger painting. Or if you want to go to this new thing where you sip, sip and paint, 
Okay, you can go to the sip and paint church, okay? And you, you can jump around, you know what I mean, and praise the Lord all day and night and, and um, satisfy your emotion. You, you, you can go down to that church. You, you don't have to listen to me, okay? You don't have to. But I am, I am teaching the raw word, the raw word, the raw word, because people are dying around us. People are dying spiritually and they're dying physically. And what are we doing about it? Nothing. We're just pushing it under the carpet, sweep it under the carpet. You know what I mean? That, this is crazy. This is crazy. And you know why? Because those of us who are called are not doing what we're supposed to do. Okay, just a moment here. Those of us who are called are not doing what we're supposed to do. The word says the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. God already knew that. God already knew that. If you have been called, I highly recommend the House of David Fivefold um, Network. That is where I attended the House of David School of Ministries. I have grown in leaps and bounds. I have grown so much. It's led by, we can take on the bishop, Tony Owens, because this man is a dumb to earth man. Very, very dumb to earth. And his wife, you, Pastor Senior, it, but you can say Senior it Owens. Down to earth people, but full of the word and a great, great teaching anointing. So I highly recommend the House of David Fivefold Network. And I, the website is www.houseofdavidfivefoldnetwork. The telephone number is 407 703 4559. And again, 407 703 4559. Okay? And his lessons are free. Yes, F-R-E-E. -E. He only asks that you pay for your materials. Yes, you have to pay for materials because paper costs money and ink costs money. It's not a scam or a gimmick to make money. Okay? So it's up to you. It's up to you. I know that I was called. And I was searching for Bible school um, back in, I got saved in when? 2009. Since then. I was searching for a Bible school, but all the Bible schools that I knew were well, you had to either travel out of, of uh, to go to another state and stuff, you know, and I had my little daughter raising on my own and it, it just wasn't convenient. And then I moved, I was in Atlanta, I moved here to Orlando and I was still looking. And then this lady, um, you know, Sister Jen, Jennifer Abraham, we prayed mothers. She told me about the ministry school that she went to in New York. And she said they moved down to Orlando. So that is how I researched it, and that is how I found them. And I was so excited, my God. And I went to them to sign up because they moved this school from New York down to Orlando. They still have a presence in New York, but they still teach a five-fold ministry, classes and ministry. So all those in the New York area and all the different um, surrounding areas of New York, the House of David School of Ministries is located in New York also. So I went all excited to start, but I didn't start that year. I did not start that year. I, it's a following. All sorts of things came in my way. Because when you're trying to move in the direction that God has called you, there will always be obstructions that come up. All sorts of things came up where it wouldn't allow me to start. Because the enemy is pissed off that you're actually finally walking in your calling. So anyway, the, the next year came up when they were starting again. I said, Lord, I cannot let another year pass. And I pressed my way, I pressed, I pressed my way, and I finally started the class. And I have been a totally, totally, totally different person. I mean, it was like, wow, 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 wow. I mean, I just moved to a whole other level. And what the Holy Spirit started doing was sending people to me, for me to pray to, for me to counsel. I mean, it's just amazing. And the thing is, when you're teaching, you're actually teaching for yourself. So when I am talking to you, brethren, I'm not just talking to you, 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 you know. Daddy, look, you, three fingers pointing back at me, Margaret Shoes. I am also ministering to my spirit to encourage me. Hallelujah. 
So yes, so there is approximately seven to eight billion people in the world today. And again, that's in my teaching in, I mentioned that in my teaching, I think the, the either you in, either you out teaching on YouTube. And there's only 33% of the population are Christians. So do you see the amount of us, the call, the fivefold that is needed to go into the world? To preach the gospel, to teach the gospel, to pray the gospel, to dance the gospel, to cook the gospel. Hallelujah. Whatever you do, do it. Do it, but in all you have to share Jesus and the gospel. That is what we are mandated to do. And that's what we have to do. We are mandated to go into the world. And that's the bottom line. And those pastors and those whoever they are, the leaders of the church that are oppressing their members, they have to answer to God. They will answer to God on judgment day because we will all be judged. Hallelujah. Romans 10 and 14 to 15 says, How then can they call on, on the one they have not believed? So how are they going to know Jesus Christ? How are they going to know Jesus Christ? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? How are they going to know? How are they going to know? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how? Unless we go. Um, Andrea, um, if you're watching, please let me know if you could see me and if the video is good. Please, somebody, please let me know. Okay, and how can how will they how will they know? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? <clears throat> Not necessarily going to a church with a microphone. Not everybody's called to do that, but one on one at the office. On the street. Hallelujah. Anywhere. But the main thing is that they have to know the gospel. They have to know what the gospel is about. That is the antivirus that was created for mankind. Hallelujah. So let's say God is the creator or the, the person that created the computer, made the computer. But before they made the computer, they knew the computer would mess up. So before the computer was even made or put together or invented, they already invented the antivirus. That is exactly what's going down, baby. That's exactly what's going down. Okay? So how are they going to hear without someone preaching to them? And how can someone, anyone preach unless they are sent? Hallelujah. Thank you, Silvani, and thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Praise God. How? How? How are they going to hear the gospel if you're sitting on your calling? How? How? But you, let me tell you something. As it is written, and it goes on to say that same scripture, and you want pen and paper, you know, write these scriptures on so you can go back. How beautiful, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hallelujah. How beautiful are your feet that you bring the good news of the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that is you. That is you. That is you, brethren. How beautiful are your feet. That is you. First Peter... Hold on a minute. Let me just read this scripture here. First Peter says, and just bear with me, I had it here and I lost it. Oh. Yes. First Peter 2 and 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Yes, Margaret Rose has become peculiar. When I was whining and go down, I wasn't peculiar, right? I was cool. Now I'm strange. She wear. 
What happened to her? Guess what? She has Jesus. She has Jesus. Guess what? That it says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into your marvelous light. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me tell you, brethren, if you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a Christian, if you have been saved by grace, hallelujah, you are mandated to share the gospel and the good news of whom who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if that's not pricking your conscience today, I don't know what else, what else is. Father, open their eyes, Father God. Open their eyes so that their scales will fall off, Father God, and they will be able to see the spirit, the spiritual Father. Open their ears, Father, so they can hear the words that are coming out from my mouth, which is not my words, but your words speaking through me in the mighty name of Jesus, because you have called me and I have answered the call in the mighty name of Jesus. I have stood up, hallelujah, to answer the call, to get, to, 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 to spread the good news. Hallelujah. In other words, what they say, man up, man up. Yes, I, I, I manned up, or I womaned up. Hallelujah, whatever they say, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So some pastors operate in pride. And they oppress the giftings of their members so that they will never grow. And they will never walk in their calling. I'm telling you, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You see what I'm saying? So the fivefold ministry, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist, the prophet, and the apostle, that is what they are, that is what these offices are for. You understand what I'm saying? So they can um, edify the body of Christ. So they can train up others to go into the world. Hallelujah. Because they cannot do it by themselves. But you know what? They're so caught up in their pride. Oh, I am um, Pastor Bishop, Doctor. Nobody says the latest thing is to get the doctorate. I am Doctor So and So, and I am Bishop So and So, and I am um, Pastor Bishop, Prophet, whatever it is. Caught up in their flesh caught up in their flesh and not concentrating on training up the members of the church because we can't do it all God has already ordained certain people to hear from me and he's ordained certain people to hear from you do you know I, and I said it before I heard the Christmas story over 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 again and it's just in 2011 I think or 2010 2011 maybe that it find I finally got it what happens at Christmas time? All from since I was in my mother belly, I hearing about Mary and Joseph. You know what I mean? How much watch? How many movies? You understand? So you just don't know who who is going to receive what. You never know what I might say to somebody. I might say the same thing, and you come behind and say the same thing. They got it from you, but they didn't get it from me. So that's what we have to do. And God is going to give you the grace. He's going to give you the grace to remember. He's going to give you the grace to receive his word. I never liked reading. Now I'm reading the word. Or now you can listen to the word. There's nobody says they have all fancy things. Um, Bible gateway is awesome. There's an audio Bible. You can just play it and it's actually faster than reading it. Just play it. Your mind might not understand it, but your spirit man does. Hallelujah. Because that is the living word. This is living. This is living. This is alive. It is alive. Hallelujah. And you know, Margaret was not lying. I ain't no liar. You check. I ain't no liar. Hallelujah. So brethren, answer the call. There is no time. God has already ordained the people that are to receive from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Inbox me. Inbox me if you need 
to find out um, how to get to the house of David. They have correspondence and online classes. Or maybe you know someone else that does it. But trust me, these classes can be really expensive. They can be really expensive. But I'm telling you, you want to at least, um, if you're interested, and, uh, and I highly recommend the House of David Fivefold Ministry because that's how I know I was stressed. That's how I know I, how I got here today. It pulled, it, 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 it pulled me out. It pulled me out to where today I am well-rooted and planted. There's nothing, nothing, nothing that's going to separate me from the love of God. Nothing. Hallelujah. 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 So everyone, all of us have different gifts and we have different personalities for a reason. Again, I am like fire. You may be just cool and calm. There are some that will receive from me or whatever I say. Um, I, I already said that it may pass over their heads, but what you might say, the same thing, and it might hit home with them. Hallelujah. Luke 15 and 7 says, and that is so beautiful, it says that there is more rejoicing in heaven over one soul than 99 righteous persons. A soul is worth so much, guys. You think the lottery is worth anything? All the lottery is going to do is make you end up sinning even more. It might make things come. You think it's comfortable, but at the end of the day, these things, this thing, all, 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 all that money does is satisfy your fleshly desires. I'm telling you. And it's leading you straight to destruction because the way of the world leads to destruction. It's in the Bible too. I'm paraphrasing now. That's all it's going to do. Look at all these millionaires and billionaires who had cancer, who commit suicide with all their money. You understand what I'm saying? So you might think, oh, look at what the car she's driving. Oh, she don't have this. Oh, she don't have the new this. And she don't have the new that. And oh, and oh, and oh, and oh. And oh, but guess what? All my riches have been stored up in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. And that's where I'm heading to. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but that's where I'm heading to. So that's what it says. And also, if you are called and you ignore the call, you will have to answer to God on judgment day. Trust me, you will. Read Revelation. I will come back and maybe bring another teaching about judgment. Do you know that they are recording angels that are recording everything that we're doing? Everything. Again, don't put God in a box. Oh, I'll just hide from God today. He don't see me now. Really? Oh, really? Oh, really? All powerful, anointed, ever-present God, the God you're praying to, to, to heal your mother, heal your father, heal your brother, heal your sister. Really? You don't think he knows and he sees all things? He's everywhere at the same time. Hallelujah. Revelations 20 and 12 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. That was John. And the Lord gave him a vision on, on the island of Patmos. And he saw that to write the books of the Lord, gave him the vision to write that book of Revelation. All those that think the Bible is just some book that the white man wrote and to whatever nonsense that they say. This book, the Holy Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit for men to write. That's the bottom line. Okay, that is the bottom line. There's, there's nothing that you're going through in your life that is not found in this word. And the Old Testament is just as important as the New Testament. Jesus is in the Old Testament, is everywhere in the Old Testament. But unless you're not seeing and hearing in the spiritual and you don't have a, a, a relationship with God, you wouldn't see it because you, you're caught up in your flesh. You don't want to read the Bible or listen to the Bible. There's no excuse right now, honestly. Hold on here. Just a moment here. Okay, yeah. So, Revelation 20 and 12 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened, 
and another book was open. So one book was open and another book was open, which is the book of life. And to the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. According to your works. So all those who are sitting on the calling, I just, I, I'm warning you. All those who are sitting on the calling, actually the word, I don't need to. I'm just, I'm just an instrument. I'm just a mouthpiece. Trust me, I'm just a mouthpiece. But I am, there's nothing that the Lord is not taking no, a note of. Okay, so these angels are all around us. We cannot see these angels, but they are there. They are there. Amen, hallelujah. Okay, so I got some, some uh, inquiries and feedback of the last life teaching. Oh, that was something else. Um, yeah, the last life teaching. Um, yes, yeah, so I was challenged. Or, uh, you know, I had gone to one place. I didn't realize it was a private place. I had to pack up, go to another place. It was hot and, and a whole sort of stuff. But I got some great feedback. And what I, what, uh, again, I, I, I um, encourage you, if there's things that I speak about that you don't understand, you need more understanding of, you want to definitely inbox me. Don't go up um, live on uh, Singing, what do you call it? Chatting me live on Facebook. I'm not going to argue the Bible. That is, I'm not doing it. So we all have to learn from each other. We iron sharpen iron. You might be of greater wisdom than I, or no more than I. No problem. I've learned to humble and receive. I'll pray about it because we have to have a spiritual discernment. Because Satan is very, very um, um, is subtle and deceiving. But um, if uh, if you don't understand, just just you know just shoot me an email or or an inbox or something let's let's talk about it because at the end of the day god doesn't want any one of us to perish you understand what i'm saying so yes if you need an understanding and um let me get this scripture here in proverbs 1 7 it says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get an understanding so please, if you need to understand why this is happening or why I said this, please, please get in touch with me. No problem. I don't have an issue. Honestly, when I first started as a Christian, I, um, I had the spirit of offense is very, very heavy against new believers. That spirit of offense because it's like once we are told that we are doing something wrong, it's like, oh, me. I don't do why now. You know, you start to feel bad. They make you feel bad. It's a spirit of offense. It's a spirit which has to be binded and cast out. It's a spirit of offense. So you want to pray against the spirit of offense. Because if somebody wiser than you or with more understanding and revelation of you would tell you something, it's because they, they discern and they see something that you should not be operating in and something that will get you into sin, which is separation from God that might be detrimental to you. So you really want to deal with it. I was offended a lot of times, but you know what? God already knew the plans that he had for me. So I was very humble and I took my whooping. I took my whooping because the word comes to rebuke. It comes to, it comes to teach. It comes to... It comes to whoop you. <laughs> I don't. I but the scripture is in um um in the in the Bible. I don't have it. Um, I don't have it memorized. But basically, that's what it does. I'll paraphrase. It comes to to whoop you, to put you back in right standing, to let you realize that what you're doing is wrong, and you have to be able to humble enough to accept that teaching, so you can move on, move up, move out, and move up. Hallelujah. Okay, so I got some feedback, and um, so the last time now I spoke about the carnival costumes, okay? So we're going back on that topic here, and I said it's a mockery of God. So I was, I was born on a carnival Saturday. I was a carnival queen. I love carnival. You can't love carnival more than me. That's the best time to me growing up on the island. That was the best time to me. I look forward to that. I love it. You understand what I'm saying? Well, I used to love it. Right now, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't want to go near it. You understand what I'm saying? Because I know what it will do. I know if I put myself... Some people might be able... I know this man who went preaching the gospel, carrying his cross, 
You know that man who carried the cross all over the world? He used to go to all of the rock concerts. He used to be um, in those flower power days. He would go to California and go to all these concerts and talk about Jesus. I know if I go into carnival, trust me, my waist go and do whoops, whaps, and it's problems from there. So I don't want to go anywhere near to it because I will not be pulled in because at the end of the day, I am flesh. You understand? And flesh will always sin. There's only one that walks sinless on this earth, and that's Jesus Christ. And I hate Jesus Christ. Okay? So we talked about the carnival costumes. Now, long ago now, um, carnival now, um, when I was growing up, it's, it, it was called masquerade. Now, although it's still revelry, and revelry is a sin, but the costumes were... Well, they were masquerade costumes. Every every carnival band had a different theme. You know what I mean? And um, they all had different themes. Of, they were called masqueraders. But now, for like in the past eight years, every year is feathers. These feathers have been introduced. And in, every year is the same thing. Feathers, 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 feathers. All kind of color feathers. You understand? Wrong. Out here, behind there, on your back. All kind of feathers. All kind of feathers. And I said, but wait. So God just brought that in my mind. Like, what's going on with these feathers? What's going on with these feathers? And I'm even seeing costumes now with actual wings. With actual wings. And first thing, when you see a wing, what do you think? Angel wings. Every Halloween, you dress up your children in, I want to be an angel. Guess what? They have angel wings. But then I'm seeing carnival costumes with angel wings, with people with a piece of panty, all their things showing. You understand what I'm saying? And a, a, just a strip across their, their titty, their, their, we say titty in the Caribbean, their, their, their breast. And some of them just even just have pasties. So what will it be next year? Nothing? Just pants? So it's under these wings, and it, tr it troubles me a lot, let me tell you. It troubles me a lot, hallelujah. And I'm not going to sit here and, and ignore it and let it pass over my head, because I am called, you understand what I'm saying? I am called to teach and to preach the gospel, and I am not going to let it bypass me, because guess what? I am going to have to answer the call on, on Judgment Day. I ain't going to hell for nobody. Nobody. Okay? So the person that inquired wanted to know why I was so angry, because I came across angry, you understand? And maybe, um, you know, some people will take offense because many, many people, hundreds of people, especially women, are buying those costumes for over between 500 and uh, some, I saw some of them even a thousand US to put on those wings on them, on those feathers. So I guess some of us are offended. You understand what I'm saying? Because you're already done by your costume and you're looking so pretty in these pretty feathers and oh, I can show off my new figure and my new body and, and all, up, all in our flesh. All up in flesh, 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 flesh. Because we all satisfy our flesh with emotional stuff and feel good stuff and we're not feeding our spirit. So we're all in flesh. So we kind of offended right now because I'm talking about the feathers. Let me tell you something, right? I used to drink a lot. I became a binge drinker. Like my father used to, my father loved alcohol. Daddy, when growing up, from a Friday evening, my father started drinking. All the friends would come over, Music playing, food cooking. That's back in the day as a little, little girl. You tell me every single one of Sparrow. Sparrow is the king of Calypso. I knew every single song. I know every single song of Sparrow by heart. I know all Bob Marley songs by heart. I know John Holt or Bolt, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. I know all these songs by heart. My father loved all this, all that music and all the Calypso. There. But all the friends would come over and it's a drinking, drinking, drinking. The Caribbean people drink a lot. You know, so that is that is like our culture. And then on Sunday evening, Sunday he started to wind down and to get ready for work. My father worked really, really hard. And that's to say I work really hard. I'm very I'm a hard worker, I work overtime for my hours. And in those days now, 
I became just like my father. I was also going to school. I completed my bachelor's, actually, and my master's doing that same, same ritual here. But I became a binge drinker from Friday afternoon. I came from work, bathed, dressed, and come down and ready for action. You understand? I got tired of going to clubs uh, because when you say I drink, I like to dance. And you go into these clubs and they're not even, they, they're not playing the music you want to play, especially Jamaican clubs. They start playing a nice reggae song, boy, and you into the reggae song, and all of a sudden, wheel and come again. And they're changing the song, like, what are y'all doing, man? I was enjoying that song. Anyway, so they'll play music that I got to keep going up to the DJ, play that, play. You know what? I just, I just shut it down. I said, you know what? I brought the club to my home. I lived in an area where the noise didn't make a difference, and I brought I was in Atlanta. As, as those who used to hang out with me, um, I called my club The Kitchen. I actually sent to Dominica for my sign, and I had The Kitchen in my, in my, in, 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 right in my kitchen. And my club started from Friday afternoon. All those that they came with their beer and their, their what they call those, what they call them, 45s or whatever, who brought whatever they brought, and played dominoes, food cooking. I used to get my cigarettes from the Caribbean. The pilots used to bring them up when they came to do their, their simulator training. They would bring it up from the Caribbean duty-free. I would get my um, um, cigarettes from England because the American cigarettes taste bad. I used to smoke cigarettes a lot. Um, I'd get my free fives from England and my B&H, you know, in the gold pack and stuff. And they would bring up um, my black label for me and my blue label and my green label and let me tell you something it was on and popping and i didn't when i drank my scotch i didn't mix it with nothing okay straight scotch and ice you understand and then i beer i used to love beer and whatever but then you know what i i it, i it's i started being being convicted because even if i'm in all of that going on the lord started pulling me out and i used to say lord Please take away this taste of alcohol from me. Take it away from me. Take it away from me, Father. And you know, eventually today, I do not drink anymore. And I don't miss it. 2015, I haven't taken a drink. And I don't miss it. Yes, when I see a cold beer boy, I remember when I used to drink a nice cold beer boy. Or my, the red wine, you know, it's good for my heart and stuff. Or, but you know what? It, it, because I know. I made a vow that I wouldn't drink it again. Nobody asked me to do it. That was my personal vow between me and God. I will not touch it because I fear God. I know who the Almighty is. I know who my Creator is. Hallelujah. And where I am heading is worth more than a drink in the, in the mighty name of Jesus. So how did I get up on that tangent? Again, the Holy Spirit just downloads what for me to say. I don't make this up. Again, if I'm uh, another thing with the time, we sit down and we scroll on, on, on social media for hours, hours, and hours, and it's not an issue. We go to see how many movies, and we sit down in a movie theater for two hours, and it's not an issue. We watch all that nonsense on TV for how many hours, and it's not an issue. But to hear the word of God, we have to complain, oh, it's too long. Okay, well, turn it off, listen to it later, because what I'm going to be doing, I, I upload all of these teachings on YouTube so you can listen to it another time. No problem. So going back to these feathers now, I had mentioned that in Psalm 91, it says, and, and, and that is a psalm, and, and what, what, what really got me is that that is a psalm that we say so often, or oh, everybody knows Psalm 91 is a psalm for protection. Everybody, all Christians know that. You understand what I'm saying? But yet, yeah, hear what it says. So I, I want to know how you pray because I, I don't, I, I, it's not connecting with me. Psalm 91 and verse 4 says, He shall cover you. Hallelujah. He shall cover you under his feathers and under his wings thou shalt trust. Hallelujah. Trust for a raise. Trust for your rent. Trust for your car payment. Trust to, to get your children out of problems. Trust so you can have a baby. Trust that your husband will come back to you. Trust for so many things. Hallelujah. So we are covered under these wings. And then Isaiah 40 and 31 says, um, They that renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. Wings again. 
Psalm 18 and 10, 10 says, the Lord flies on the wings of the, we the wind. So these are just one or two scriptures talking about um, the wings uh, and feathers, hallelujah, connecting to God Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But now, in, and, and the thing is, I am not, not talking to those who are have not received Jesus Christ as our as the, as the Lord and Savior. I am talking to the Christian, because you call yourself a Christian, right? You went to church this morning, you took out your picture, click church flow, I'm in church. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Uh, so you're in church, you understand what I'm, taking, uh, uh, what I'm saying? But you going to pay 500 US to put on feathers and wings on you. You understand what I'm saying? And you call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a Christian, always pointing fingers, pointing fingers, pointing fingers, not realizing three fingers pointing back at you. So look at them, look at those, look at them. It's either you call yourself a Christian or you're talking about Christians. So I'm talking to the lukewarm church. So those, these are those that call themselves Christians. And God knew about the lukewarm church. Those with one foot in and one foot out. There we go, in or out ministries. This is what this ministry is about. Jesus, uh, God is using, the Holy Spirit is using me to talk to the Lukewarm Church. And that's not easy. That is not something easy to do. You have to be bold. You have to be bold. And it's not easy. Trust me. When I'm done here, I have to pray against the spirit of retaliation. But Satan is going to come back to try and get me. Because I am speaking the truth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But I'm covered under the blood. He can't touch me. I'm covered under the blood. The word said in Revelation 3, 15 and 16, it says, I know thy works. And you need to, 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 to learn it by heart. I say it all the time. That thou art neither cold nor hot. So God, Jesus, is, and Jesus is speaking. He said he knows already. I would thou work. So he's wishing that you were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. I will spit you out of my mouth. I will vomit you out of my mouth. That is what Jesus says. <laughs> and you know that. But you still go and put on the feathers and the costume. You still going to do it knowing that. Do you know some people actually go to, if those that are having carnivals on the Sundays, they go to church on Sunday singing, okay, click, I registered in the Christian club, God see me, great. And then in the afternoon, they go in the carnival, in the, in, 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 in the feathers and the costumes. I mean, come on, man. That, that, is, that is a slap in God's face. That's a big slap. But God loves us so much. He already devised a plan so that we could come out of that mess. So it's either you are in or it's either you are out. Being on the fence is just as being out. Some people say, oh, you know what? I'll just do, I'll step there and then I'll step there. I'll just keep there. According to how they swear, I'll just swear with them. But, honey, you, you're out. You're out. You're not in. You out. You out. Hold on. So we call our well, I said that already. We call ourselves Christians. We go to church. We do the church flow thing. We take our pick. You know, we pray everything, praying hands. Praying hands. Oh, praying hands. Amen. 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 You have the most amens on Facebook. The most amens. Amen. 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 Yet we go to purchase these costumes, as I said before, for how much money? Up to $1,000. We put on these feathers over our naked bodies, well, almost naked bodies, exposed bodies. Why not go down? Why not go down? Hey, why not go down? Why not go down? You know what I mean? Why not go down? Now, because God Almighty is relating to feathers and wings, it bothers me. It bothers me. You understand what I'm saying? It bothers me a lot. 
It bothers me. As they say, birds of a feather flock together. You don't know, the birds of the feather are his creation. Also, so God created the fowl of the air with the wings and the birds too, just but God relates to feathers and wings in his in his in his in his word. Now there's another created being that has feathers and wings. And that is Satan. So here it is now. Satan was an angel. Now not all angels have feathers or wings. Okay? Some have like eyes all over them. And some are even shaped like wheels. So there are different levels of angels and there are different types of created angels. And I most likely, I, I will do a teaching on angels at some point when the Holy Spirit tells me to. But in Ezekiel 28, 13 to 15, it reads, it gives a description of Satan in his original created form. Because Satan, um, um, like in Job, Satan is, is, is described as the uh, Leviathan. And um, of course, Satan was used, Satan, um, the snake, um, Satan was used, um, well, Satan came into the snake and, that, and we see that aspect of Satan too. Satan is not no man with two red horns and a red cape and that, that is pure nonsense. That is pure nonsense. So it says here in Ezekiel 28, 30 to 15, he was the anointed cherub. Now a cherub is an angel that has two pairs of wings and four faces. Yes, four faces. One face is of a lion. One face is of an ox. One face of a human and the other an eagle. That is Satan's original created, whatever you call it, created body, I guess. So that's the type of angel that Satan was, because we knew Satan was an angel. So he was anointed. So when we hear about the anointing, is somebody that has a special, how should I say it? Somebody has that has been elevated in the in the in the body of Christ, like a fivefold minister, and he has the anointing on a special gift from God, a special position. So Satan was right up there with the archangels Gabriel and um, Michael. So Satan was not a little fool, fool, fool angel. The angels are created at different; they, they have different jobs. They're different from humans. We cannot transition into angels. We're not. We'll never be angels. Now, some angels can manifest as a human, but they, they're not humans either. Okay. So this was said. So these feathers and wings now are mixed with reveling, debauchery, and you can go Google what debauchery means, like, like the per sexual perversion and the raunchiness and everything. And it's a mockery of God. And or, or it can be a representation of Satan. Which is the act of sin. And the act of sin. The, and I can't be angry. Not angry where I hate you. And I want to kill you. Or I want to curse you up. Not that kind of anger. But it, uh, it, it, my heart, actually, my heart is hurting me. It makes me angry to, to, because I'm a representative of God. I have Christ living in me. I have the Holy Spirit living in me. The same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The same Spirit that breathed life into us when we were born, when we came out from between our mother's legs. That's what we have in us that gave us life. Hallelujah. And we're making a mockery out of it. And then we're choosing to represent Satan. Instead of representing Christ in us, we call ourselves Christians. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is really, really hurtful. 
It's really, really hurtful. And we can have a holy anger as Jesus had when he came into the temple and was so upset when he saw that it was turned into a marketplace. He started overturning all the tables because these people were in the holy temple of God and our bodies is, is supposed to be the temple of the living God. We house the Holy Spirit in us. So the temple is no longer a physical place. It's our body. And we're defiling it. You know what God Jesus did? He came into that temple. These people had it like a marketplace. They were taking all the animals that they were sacrificing, taking it and selling it and doing gambling and doing all sorts of stuff. And Jesus came and just started mashing down tables. He was so upset. That's in Matthew 21. 12 and 13, and you can also find it in Mark 11 and 15. Let me tell you, brethren, let me tell you something, right? Satan has only one agenda, and which is, it is to steal, to kill, and to destroy humanity. That is it. That is it. There is no other agenda. He has the same agenda from way back since he was the anointed cherry in front of um, covering um, 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 the God Almighty. The same agenda. It hasn't changed. He has not changed from the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3 and 1 says, No, the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field which the Lord had made. So the Lord made the serpent. The serpent was an animal. The serpent apparently was beautiful, standing up, you know, beautiful. The, 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 it was just an, another animal. Now, Satan is not a snake. Satan looked to see who he could use to get to Eve. But there was only Adam, the original man, or Eve. So he couldn't use them. But what he did, he looked at the animals. But the snake was the most subtle. It suited the character that he needed to get to Eve, the original woman. So the characteristics of the serpent was nice. The serpent was fine and delicate. It was thin. That's what subtle is. Acute, piercing, sly, artful. Cunning, crafty, deceitful, treacherous, refined. These are all the different characteristics that the snake had. A lion has a different set of characteristics. He, couldn't, he didn't want to go into the lion because he would not bother with the lion. But if he went into, into the snake who was a smooth talker, you know what I mean? To woo that original woman who walked and talked with God. And then something else coming into her ear? Okay. So he went into the serpent. So Satan chose the serpent with these characteristics so he could go into the, the, the serpent and use to deceive, use the snake to deceive man. Hallelujah. Now, if we say we, we love God, we say we have received from Jesus Christ and he's our Lord and Savior, we even go to church and then the same day we put on our costume and feathers and we go make fools of ourselves. So what it, it means that we are blinded. We are totally blinded. There is something that is blocking us from not seeing what we are doing. There is something. What is it that is blocking us from, from, um, from doing that? Because we love, we, some of us, we love God. We need God. You know what I mean? We are totally blinded. But we openly go, we openly go and we agree to sin, to become separated from God. You know what I mean? I, I had a friend that says, you know, you know, we can do a little dancing with the devil. Even as far as that, we can go dance with the devil. Like, what are you talking about? Do you know who Satan is? And you know, we do the same thing for um, Halloween. But you know what, brethren, what I want to share with you, and I'm almost done here, that besides all of that, you understand what I'm saying? That besides all of that, 
God already devised a plan for man because God knew that man would be doing all of that. If you look in Second Timothy, these are uh, in the times of Noah. Google it, the times of Noah. It's going to tell all what you see that's happening now. That's exactly God already knew. It's written in the Bible. How can you write something that was written how many thousand years ago and it's happening today? Go figure. Okay? But I just want to tell you that hell is a real place just like heaven is a real place. Not all of us are going to go to heaven. Nope. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you are not repenting and living a holy and righteous life, you are not going to go to heaven. I'm telling you that right now. Okay? Hell, or known as Hades, is a holding cell. Okay? And when we die, if we, if we do not die with Christ, we go to hell. Okay? And hell is eventually going to be thrown. The whole of hell after judgment day. I'm not a judge. I'm not God. I don't judge. So I don't know what will happen on judgment day. But the whole of hell is going to go into the lake of fire, which is eternal. Okay? And that's called the second death. So we die once, we go to hell or heaven, and then there's going to be a second death for those who were living, not living in the presence of God, knowing that there is God, refuse to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They are going to hell from hell, and when judgment day comes, then they go, the whole of hell is going to go into the lake of fire. It's in the book of Revelation. Revelation 21 and 8 says, But the fear, the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there's a long list to all those that will end up there. So hell itself will be thrown into the lake of fire, which will burn forever. But, 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 our Father, our Creator, loves His creation so much. He loves us so much. He loves us. He loves humanity so much. John 3, 16 and 18 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life hallelujah hallelujah his desire is that none should perish so even if he sees us doing all that mess he still doesn't want us to perish for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. So for those of us who are saved and for those of us who fall behind, please do not condemn yourselves. God already knew that. The word says there is no condemnation to those, that who, those who are in Christ. So if you're trying to walk the walk, you understand what I'm saying? The good fight of faith, etc., to walk that straight and narrow path, and you mess up. God already has that antivirus. You repent, you ask for your for you ask for forgiveness, you repent, and you go straight back on that straight and narrow path. He is he he is already sent his son to shed his blood so that we will be forgiven. Hallelujah. So there is no, so don't beat up yourself. Some people beat up themselves so much. It happened to me, so I know. When I talk, I know. I know being there, done that. Being there, done that. You know, I would say, Lord, I am going down to Miami for carnival, but this time I don't want to drink. Lord, Father, please help me don't drink, please. I would go to my elders in Georgia. The lady would pray, 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 pray over me until after she prays, she weak. Okay, I go on my way to Miami. Next week, I get drunk again. Lord, Father, I feel him so bad. I feel him so bad. But you understand what I'm saying? But no, no, no. All of these are lessons for us. But no, we can come back. 
when you give your life to the, um, Jesus Christ and you make him the Lord, and he will forgive you of you. You just have to ask, Lord, forgive me, and he will forgive you. Hallelujah. And then he will begin to, to change you from the inside out, not from the outside in. No, he says we want instant change. It's not going to come instant. But we have to choose. We, he knows your heart. You might be out there hanging out and doing all kind of crazy stuff. But if your heart says, Lord, take me out from that, take me out from that, trust me, he's going to take you out. Because he sees your inner heart. He doesn't care what's on the outside. It's what's in your heart. So he that believeth, that's continuing with John 3, 16 and 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the same name of the only begotten Son of God. Hallelujah. So God already knows your end before your beginning. God already knows um, if you will accept him or not. He already knows. He already knows. Okay, hallelujah. Psalm 51 says, against, and, and verse 4 says, against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. When we sin against God, when we sin against somebody else or we commit sin, we actually sin against God. But you know what? He's already given his son as an, uh, the ultimate sacrifice to cover us from all of our sins. And all we have to ask is to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and, um, and repent and we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Uh, but the thing is, we still, the sad thing is we believe and we are still, but we, are, we, we believe because we go to church and we believe. We say the I believe. We believe, oh, Father, we are in heaven, hell. We believe, we pray everything. But we are still willingly sinning against God. We are still look lukewarm. We are still being lukewarm. And what Jesus said, he's going to spit us out of his mouth. Hallelujah. That's what I don't understand. So what it tells me here is that the fivefold ministry, the priest, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the, the um, teacher, the pastor. What are they teaching? What are they teaching? If you're still messing up constantly and there is no change, what is it? What is it? We have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto us. Matthew 6 and 33. We have to keep seeking after the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm going to be talking about righteousness. I'm not sure if it's next time. So actually, maybe the next time I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about righteousness to tell you the rights that you have as a Christian. Because I don't think we realize the power that we have as Christians and the rights that we have as Christians. You have certainly having more power than we that have all the power. This is, this, this is not making sense. So stop putting God in a box. Don't put God on a shelf to collect dust and take him down when we need him. This is God Almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God. His word in Matthew 10 and 33 said, But whoever denies me before men, hear this, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is written in the Bible. <laughs> and God is not a man that he should lie, not the son of God that he should repent. This is in the Bible. So you keep denying God. You're too ashamed to say, Jesus, oh, I'm into myself and my inner, inner, inner self and I and I and I and I and, and you know, my, oh, whatever. Oh, oh, Lord Jesus. So, but whosoever denies me before men, that's what he said, I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. So I pray that the teaching has touched your heart today. That is it for me. Um, yeah, I will be back in two weeks and I'm going to talk about the rights that you have as a, as a Christian. I think we need to know that. Word of knowledge is coming up every single Thursday at 8.30 p.m. So even if I don't post it, it is there. It will be there on my Facebook page. You click the link, you download Zoom, you call or whatever. We're going to talk about the rapture. 
We're going to discuss the rapture, okay? By the, what the word of God says about the rapture. Okay, that's when God's supposed to move on all his, his church and um, etc. before the tribulation or after the tribulation. We don't know. Let us look. We know, but let us go discuss it because there's a lot of controversial um, beliefs and doctrine regarding the rapture. So we're going to discuss the rapture on Thursday coming up. I'll see you in two weeks. And for those who have not accepted Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, you can just repeat with me. I praise you. I worship you. I give you thanks and honor and glory. Father, I recognize that I am a sinner. Those that are, want to maybe come back or, or, or rededicate yourself to Christ. I recognize that I, I, am, I am a sinner, Father. I am sorry. I repent. I forgive anyone who has hurt me. Please forgive me for my sins. Father, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. He went down into hell. He took the keys from Satan. He rose again. And right now he's sitting at your right hand, Father, making intercession for me, Father. Father, I believe I, will, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Father, I want to walk in your will and I want to walk in your way, Father. Change me from the inside out, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. And I say amen, 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 and amen. So brethren, I love you. Bless you. If you have any questions, inbox me. And enjoy your Sunday and peace out. Peace out. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now I need to know how to end this. Okay, just a moment, please. This thing has done this weird thing. I don't even know what to do.